Hello team, it's Nick here. Just uh, this is the first seminar, so I'll just give you a little. We'll do this trend, do this every week. It's helped people last week. You can skip through. I'm just going to talk you through the seminars, expectations. Obviously, put your own spin on these. You know, you've all got your own flavour and take on this, so it'll be good to have a bit of a variety. But this is what I was sort of expecting for the sessions. Okay, so we start off and we talk about there's two sessions, there's two workshops. In the on-campus uh, sessions, I talk a lot in the um, lectures, give them a lot of theory. So please take the time to, or use the time to, to explore practical sessions. I have put loads of theory in here as well, just to support and reinforce what I was saying in the lecture, but use the time to make stuff. They should be creating digital stuff in these sessions. So if you're worried about you know, not getting through everything, always put the practical stuff first and then I can go over the theory in the lectures. Okay, so there's two parts. First part is the green screen and the clips and then the second part is the animation. So I'd probably do the first part first, have a little break and then come back for the animation. So you can see here, we're using the app called Clips. So on any phones, people, uh, some students will want to do this on their phones, which is fine. If they've got Apple, everyone with an Apple device will have Clips on there. They may not know that, but it comes free. Or use the um, uni devices. Use the uni um, iPads is the word that I am looking for. Okay. We are going to just show them briefly the digital competency framework. I have gone through this in the lecture, so don't worry too much. Don't worry too much about the Samia model. Again, I've gone through this in the lecture. The main thing I want you to do is the clips and the green screen. Okay, so just flying through this. There's a guide there. So I actually talk them through how to use it. Hello, today we're looking at the app, which is called... If you can stand my voice. <laughs> so... There, what I would get them to do is get everyone at the start of the session to open up Moodle and have this pre this presentation and they can all watch this in their own time or you could put it on the main screen and they watch it together, it's up to you. So the clips task. So again, try and reinforce, this is really, really important that in these sessions we are creating digital content that they're going to put on their blog. So they need to engage with these tasks on their own they need to do these so if they use their own phones fine if they want to use ipads absolutely fine so they're going to make a short uh, clips film using the app clips i want them in the film to discuss how confident they are using technology record how many times they've used technology today i want them to include one photo they save from the internet include a title poster so that could be you know, welcome to my video or whatever they're doing and include a soundtrack. This is all explained on the video that I've just done. Save this to the camera roll and then this needs to be uploaded to their blog. Really important that they do that. And if they don't have time to do this today, well then encourage them to do this after the session. But just the whole thing I want to get in the process of this module, we're going to create stuff. They need to upload it. Um, the good ones will actually take this on and they'll, they'll do this at home and then they'll make better versions at home and that's absolutely fine. If we just introduce the ideas here, that's fine. There are alternative Android apps. There are some Android lovers who will be saying, I don't want to use Apple. That's fine. So they can use Funimate, they can use Magisto, they can use Quick. I haven't made videos for them. Again, encourage them. The whole part of this module isn't just that you know, there's a few of us who are experts and we'll show you how to use technology. What we want to do is encourage them to find their own apps. They might find a better app. They might, you know, think of something else or use a different app. That's what we want to encourage, definitely. So don't feel that this, if, if you are feeling a bit uh, intimidated by all these apps and stuff we're using, be honest with them. Just say, you know, I'm sure... You know, I'm really confident with using technology, and I'm sure there's probably some students who are better than me at it because they use it all the time, and that's fine. And that's going to be the process in primary schools as well. So, you know, don't worry if they are. This is really important now. We need to get them to set up a YouTube account. This will probably take about five minutes. Some of them will have YouTube accounts already. I would 
ask them, speak to them, see how many have a Gmail account. If they've got a Gmail account, then they have got a YouTube account. Really important that they set up their YouTube account there and then, because if they if you let them go and do it in their own time, they probably won't do it. So it's important for this module, they have a YouTube account, so they can put all the work that they create onto their YouTube account. There's a video here, again, how to set up a YouTube channel. All right, so when they've done all that, we can quickly talk to them, not too long. So why bother teaching digital technology? Get some of their ideas, get some of their understanding. You could use these quotes as a bit of, um, if they're, they're not really engaging with the debate, then you can use some of these quotes. You can talk around some of these. But again, not too long. I just want them to start to think about you know, digital technology, these are some of the ideas, why we have digital competency. This is a really nice picture. It shows them how the, dig the DCF is broken down. I would get them to do this not long. You know, get them to work in twos, threes, whatever they're comfortable with. Get them to explore the DCF. So just by going on to Google and having a look at where it is, it's going to help them. Give them a strand each. So in their groups, you know, one might be exploring data and computational thinking, one might be exploring something else. Just get them to have their initial thoughts, write down some ideas, and then collate them, as you can see here, to the class. They just present to the class. Now, again, this is very, very briefly. It's just really so they have a look what the DCF is. We talk about the blog. So we talk about the first blog talk to them about their suggested blog posts. So one of them they could do, this is an easy one for them to do, is how can teachers use technology effectively in the primary school? And again, say to them, it's not just about the positives of technology. How can they use it effectively? Also, there might be some barriers, there might be some challenges. Again, I would just flag this to them, have a brief conversation. This is mainly meant to spark in them to think about, oh God, I've got to write a blog. So it's just a bit of a starting point. You can say this is the first session. There's some information there about the Samia model. Again, don't worry too much about that. There's some quotes there. Again, spend your time on the clips and on green screens. These are just a bit of conversation in between. Okay, so on green screens, really important you collect the green screens from reception and these are up. Uh, in the classroom. We're going to use Do Ink. Now the Do Ink, you can buy your own. <clears throat> I bought these for the iPads. So again, most of the apps that I'm using are free. Do Ink have recently started to charge for, the, for this app. So there are other green screen apps that they can use. Again, encourage digital competency. If you guys wanted to buy it, it's a couple of pound. I would say you're probably going to get some use out of it. It is really good. I've bought it myself, but you don't have to. And if you did want to have a play around, go and borrow one of the iPads from Mark the night before. Have a play around with it. Really, really simple to use. I've got a video there of how you can use green screen. So the first task is for them to take a selfie. So they're just having a go at um, using the green screen. Some of them will have used it. Some of them won't. Again, those that are confident, use them. They can be your digital ambassadors. They can help you to use these green screens. So there's a picture of mine. So again, with green screen, the way that it works, they stand in front of a green screen. They'll need to save a picture before the, um, they use it. Whatever's behind them on the green screen, so whatever image they use, that image will be projected onto the green, and then they will stand in front of it. To use the app, there are these plus buttons here. So it's really important you need the camera on the top and you need the image below. You'll see when you start to use the um, Do Ink, it's really simple, it's just layering. So the first part is your video, the second part is your image. As you stand in front of there, then you'll have your green screen. So once they've done that selfie picture, they can tweet that, they can send it to friends, again, put it on their blog. Their next task in pairs, so one will be filming, one will be in front, is to record a really short introduction to their blog. So they could be, hello, my name is Nick, this is my blog. And you could be out on a beach in Coca Cabana and you could have some tropical music playing, whatever you want. It could be you are in a classroom and you have some 
children's background music. I don't know, children talking or whatever in the background. It's just they can do whatever they want. But the whole point of this is this, they get to experience using green screen. Because as a teacher, I'm sure they're going to use it. There's some ideas there of what their location could be. You could say to them, look, this could just be a practice. You could um, film this at home. Or if they wanted some time to think about it, they could come back to this after the animation. So some of ours last year, they wanted to do a good job. They did the animation, and then at the end of the session, they re-recorded the green screen, which is absolutely fine. Okay, there's just, again, some instructions for them of what they need to do. And that's pretty much it. And you could talk to them just before they go on breaks. You know, how could you use green screens? How would you use them in the classroom? Are there any challenges associated to it? Okay, and then what will be... Can you all... This is, I forgot to say... Share these, obviously, on the ITE hashtag for or the ITE um, Twitter, but also share them with me as well, and I can share them. Um, share their videos, share their selfies. There's usually some really funny ones on there. And then we've got a bit of a community then that we create online by them sharing where they are. Some really funny ones last year was um, people were sending me, sorry, Nick, couldn't come to the lecture because I'm in Rome or couldn't come to the lecture because... I'm in a UFC fight, you know, whatever they put, they can go as mad as they want with it. But that created quite a nice digital community. Okay, that's the first workshop. Okay, so we come back to seminars, give them a break, and then they come back for this animation workshop. So you will need a box of toys. They can animate anything. Some really good ones last year actually animated themselves, and that was quite funny. Um, some of them did scissors, some of them did toys. Usually there's always a shark attack because there's a shark in there, you know, whatever they want to do. The whole point of this is just to show them, this is a really good example of, you could use animation in a cross-curricular way, you could use it in history, you could use it in maths, you could use it in so many different ways, and they're going to have a go at doing it. So we talked to them about how it's a strand and how we would be developing some of the DCF skills. I would show them, there's two examples here, show them the love story. Now this is using the app that we're using, so stop motion animation. This has been made, it took them over a year to make this. So stress to them, to the students, look, we're not looking for this quality of animation. We're only looking for about 30 seconds, if that. But this is a really good example of what you could do with animation. Okay, so you can animate anything. There's another example there. You don't need to watch these. Again, they could watch these in their own time. I always say to them, behold the onion. Obviously, because of the layers. Animation projects with children. I've done them from foundation phase right the way through to uni. They work really well if you layer it. So the first layer, if you get them to just to jump straight in, then there won't be much of a story. So the first thing they need to do is they need to have a go at using the animation app just so they're familiar with using it. So the first thing they need to do before they start thinking about stories, they start thinking about anything, get them to have a play with the stop motion animation app. Um, so get them to animate some scissors, get them to animate themselves, get them to animate just a pen moving around the, the, um, the table. So basically stop motion animation is just, it just takes pictures and strings those pictures together to make a film. There's a tutorial there if you guys get stuck. It's pretty intuitive to use. Okay, so after they've done that, they need to then, before you give them the toys, they've had a quick play, really important that they talk about the story. They start to think about, well, what could happen? Some of them might want to go and get the toys and then look at what toys they've got to create a story. That's absolutely fine. But get them to write down somewhere some brief notes, a short storyboard, because they're the ones that do a lot better, and especially with children. If you've got them without to do it without a storyboard, then it can be a bit of a mess. Again, you can talk to them about uh, the literacy framework. You could talk to them about how you develop a story. Um, so they need to plan it out. Then they need to obviously record it, so they use the stop motion app. They can use green screens. There will be some groups who are a bit nervous and not that confident we use technology. That's fine. They don't have to use green screens. But if they, you do use a green screen, so for example, last year we had 
um, some students who were filming, they wanted to film a train yard. So they saved the image of a train yard. They filmed their animation. And as you can see here, they had the green screen in the background. So at the end, once they exported the video, they then used the green screen app to put their picture over the top. Again, behold the layers. The first thing you'll do is you'll record the animation in the stop motion app. The next layer after that is then you can do editing in apps like um, Do Ink, green screen, or you can add in sound effects. You can add in a soundtrack in iMovie. Not all groups, just with pupil groups, will get this far. They won't all be that digitally competent. Most groups will probably get as far as recording their stop motion, and that's it. But you will get groups who are absolutely amazing, and they will be flying, and um, you know they'll want to put in sound effects. They'll want to put in um, different things. And again, there's loads of different apps they can use to do that. Really important, they publish and share the movie. So they can save that to their YouTube channel and then they can put the YouTube channel link to their blog. Okay, there's another example there of green screens and what you need to do. So once they've exported from um, the green screen app and once they've exported from the stop motion app, the final layer is the iMovie. So in iMovie, they can add in sound effects, they can add in soundtracks, they can add in text. Again, say to them, have a play around. You know, I've done this with um, year threes, and I didn't really tell them how to use iMovie. It's really, again, quite intuitive to use. Um, but you can drop in the sound effects where you need them. You know, the video is only going to be about 30 seconds long anyway, so they're not going to take a big amount of time. But you can make them look really good in a short amount of time. You can add in text. You can add in the soundtracks by pressing, pressing the plus button on iMovie. And there you can drop in these different things. Um, again, do all this on one device. Don't do it across multiple devices because it becomes a bit complicated. If they do finish and some groups will be flying, get them to reflect on what DCF skills, LNF skills, how you can make this more cross-curricular. What areas of the curriculum can we develop with animation? Make sure they share to their blogs and there's some references there. But the thing with the green screens, the thing with um, the animation, you can have some groups that are absolutely flying, you can have some groups which are going to need a lot more support. So for you, I'd have a play around with the apps first. You don't need to be experts in them, but you need to sh just be sure of where you need to direct them. Um, and just have something up your sleeve. So I've got here, you know, if they do finish, get them to go on to the DCF, get them to go and think about what areas they're learning what area of the curriculum can we develop? I'll put my mobile on the sheet as well. So if you are stuck in the session, just give me a ring and uh, I can help you. But again, stress to the students that, you know, this shows that if you can't do it, then that's absolutely fine. And that's the process of digital competence is that we learn and develop our competence together as teachers and as pupils. Any questions, give me a shout.